More now on one of our top stories. Supreme Court Justice Russell Brown is retiring with immediate effect. That move comes after the Judicial Council launched an investigation into a claim of misconduct against him. Now, I want to bring in Malcolm Lavoie now. He is a constitutional law scholar and an associate professor at the University of Alberta's Faculty of Law. Malcolm, thank you for making the time. Let's start by getting your reaction to all of this. What do you think? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I'm, I'm surprised uh, uh, at, at the news. Uh, I think it's a tremendous loss for the Supreme Court of Canada. Justice Brown made great contributions uh, to, to a number of areas of law and was a, a well-respected member of the court. Uh, it appears that he's uh, made the decision to retire in order to avoid uh, the uh, public inquiry uh, that, that uh, reports say was, was coming in, in response to the allegations uh, made against him. I can imagine that um, part of that decision was to avoid uh, the, the, the difficult process that that would involve, um, which could go on for months or years, um, and could the, the process itself could be damaging to his reputation and the reputation of the court. You know, we've seen that with, with some past Canadian Judicial Council uh, inquiries. Uh, so it's, it's disappointing news. Uh, I think it's a loss for the Canadian judicial system. Um, and it's a little surprising. You know, I didn't expect to, to see that. Now, take us back a little bit, Malcolm, about how we got here, because some Canadians may be watching and might think, huh, this is unusual. We don't often have a Supreme Court justice retire, step down. These are positions often held for a significant period of time. So talk to us a little bit about how this all happened. Sure, yeah. So there were allegations uh, made against uh, Justice Brown relating to a uh, conference in, in Arizona some, some months back. Uh, a uh, retired Marine uh, named Jonathan Crump uh, made, the, made the, the complaint against him to the Canadian Judicial Council following uh, an altercation that the two of them had at the resort uh, that, that uh, ended with uh, Mr. Crump uh, punching uh, Justice Brown. Um, he says in response to uh, uh, Justice Brown's conduct, uh, the allegation is that he was, uh, he was uh, drunk and, and, and making unwanted advances. Um, and, and so that's essentially what the complaint included. Justice Brown denied those allegations. Uh, uh, we still don't have uh, his story. Um, but uh, what that, that complaint started a process that went to a review. Um, and uh, the review was, was due to, 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 to release its report. The review panel was due to release its report. Um, and one of the things they could have recommended is a move to uh, an inquiry. And an inquiry would have the power to recommend the removal of Justice Brown, and it would be a, a public uh, process. Um, and the reports today suggest that that perhaps uh, that is what the review panel was going to recommend, this, this inquiry, which could go on for some time and, and have a public element to it, um, and could ultimately lead to a judge's removal, which is incredibly rare in Canada and, and has never happened um, at the Supreme Court of Canada before. So given that, what do you make of how this has all been handled? Uh, yeah, I mean, there are, there are questions about how, how it's been handled. There are questions about uh, the leave. Justice Brown's been on a, a leave from the Supreme Court of Canada since February. There are, are questions about whether uh, the Chief Justice actually had the power to put him on that, on that leave. Um, the sort of dribble of information that came out about it uh, uh, was, not, was, was not ideal, and, and I think itself was quite damaging to Justice Brown's reputation. You had uh, sort of news coming out that he was on a leave, and then for a while it was unclear why he was on a leave. Uh, then you had uh, news stories that, that uh, included some of uh, Mr. Crump's allegations, and, and those are, of course, quite damaging to Justice Brown. Um, we still have never heard Justice Brown's response. Uh, he denied the allegations, as we've seen. Um, and so I, I, I think that uh, folks need to have, the Canadian Judicial Council should have a look at how this has played out in the public sphere, um, because, you know, the, the, it's easy to see how this could be seen to be quite unfair to Justice Brown, that you have these allegations aired um, uh, without, without a response. Um, and, you know, people, people will tend to assume those things are true, um, even if perhaps they're not. In the absence of information, often that void becomes yeah. filled, as we all know. Could you perhaps explain to us a little bit about how this move could impact cases currently before the Supreme Court? Uh, yeah, so, so the cases that are already before the Supreme Court that haven't been heard yet, those will be decided by the, the remaining uh, justices who, who heard those cases. 
Um, there will be, you know, new new uh, new cases heard uh, beginning in the fall, and and perhaps Justice Brown's replacement uh, will be in place by then. Uh, Justice Brown, uh, uh, you know, as I said, was a was a strong and respected member of, of the court, um, but he was known for for certain views. He was known. Um, for instance, on, on questions of federalism, uh, for being someone who was sensitive to the, the autonomy of the provinces. Um, he had he had a strong background in private law, property, contract, and tort, and those, those skills and that background will be missing. Um, but, you know, the court's business will go on with, with eight judges, and the prime minister at some point in the coming months will uh, nominate a replacement. All right, we will watch for all of that. Malcolm Lavoie is an associate professor at the University of Alberta's Faculty of Law.